<coughs> there you have it. There is uh, that's the technique that I use most in blending my wool pastels. Just with uh, dipping it in turpentine and going over it with a brush. Like I said, I don't see, I don't really see a whole lot of people incorporating this technique. Um, so you might want to like, like I mentioned before, do a sketch, initial sketch to familiarize yourself with how it works and how it blends. And because um, what what works for some may not work for others. And. So basically, um, there we have that. Now I'm taking a probably that block of wood that's on the floor. I don't know what that block of wood is there for. I guess maybe that's to set your foot on when you're wanting to look at the pictures or whatever. But um, anywho. Um, Thinking maybe, think maybe a little bit of a yellow ochre, and then going over the lighter side of it in the the highlight part of the painting. I'm thinking about doing some yellow ochre and then doing a coating of raw umber raw umber over that. <laughs> Try to get your tongue wrapped around that. All right. Um, so I said yellow ochre, that's going to be 27, 227.5, which is this one here. Yes. What I like to do whenever I'm working on the full pastels is the colors that I know I'm going to be using again and the uh, other parts of the er other areas of the painting, I just leave them out. That way you can go back to them easily and you don't have to sit there and look for them. That's a little tidbit for you there. Let's see the shadow goes about right here. And as I had mentioned earlier, this um when blending with these, this solvent, the turpinoid solvent, it dries back fairly quickly. You can see it's, well, it's probably dry back already. <laughs> it dries really, really quickly. But, um, it's a good idea to work on certain areas of the painting and then stop and then move over to another area of the painting it kind of keeps your mind fresh and it doesn't um, your mind won't struggle and wonder wonder about and what you're doing and it keeps a steady flow if you will so I'm just going to blend this out a little bit back out here and see um, all right I'm going to use the raw umber I said I was going to use that over the yellow ochre but I'm going to use raw umber as the base for the side of the block because that is the um, in the shade that's number 408.5 I think it's this color here Yes. Just 
you should only be saturated with turbine oil. In the previous Okay, um, let's see. <sighs> the color of the gentleman's trousers are about the same color <laughs> as the, uh, the shade part underneath the uh, bench that he's got the paintings laid out on. So that's going to be a bit difficult to uh, separate. And um, I'm going to say this. I'm going to use one of the grays. Yeah, the warm gray number 718.5. Oops, I'm bumping the camera again. Yes, this is 718. This is 718.5 warm gray. If you're using the Van Gogh line or pastels, you may not be, but it's basically a warm gray, and I'm going to put some down on the um, the outer edge of his uh, clothing. Because there's like like I said, that's the area that the shaft of light is coming in. The shaft of light looks like it's coming in um, over his left shoulder, and it's kind of like left back coming down. So I'm just going to put a few initial marks there. kind of separate, give separation from the shadow. Just like I said in the painting, it looks like his, his clothing is the same color as the uh, the shadow. Which probably looks like it's either a sepia mixed in with a little bit of Van Dyke Brown. and I just abruptly stopped that means my cameras is uh, ran out of memory and I can only record for 20 minutes at a time and as you can tell I tend to get kind of long-winded um, but uh, so if I if I'm talking then I just stop talking all of a sudden and then pick back up that's what the deal is my camera is running out of, out of uh, recording time and I don't have really any way of knowing unless I set up a timer or something um, so but anywho um, we are going to go in and um, I said we was going to go with the CPO which is number 416.5 and then I'll probably be this color here started and or stopped the video and come back to it um, I put down some sepia here to um, 
This is making a cast shadow from the light source. Um, and, and the picture is kind of hard to differentiate the difference between um, the shadow and his clothing. I mean, well, the shadow area down here underneath this bench, and the clothing on, on his, his clothes, and the, the folder that he's looking in the uh, looking at art prints in that holds the is. <laughs> it looks like it's all about the same color and so whenever I try to do renditions I usually try to make them as accurate as possible color wise but um, um, like I said, I try to make them as, as accurate as possible, but sometimes I differentiate a little deliberately in order to um, make it not look exactly the same. And as you can see here as I'm working, it's kind of hard to blend. I don't know what, if it's the pigment or the binder and the pastel stick. But the sepia and the black is um, kind of hard to uh, work with, blending wise. And you can see I don't have my paper taped down. I like making the full version of um, I, I like to cover the complete surface with pastel sometimes I make a border uh, especially with watercolors because you have to tape the paper down or, really, or else it will buckle <coughs> um, but I don't usually when working with oil pastels I don't usually make a border um, this is if you frame it, it will, um, you don't see oil paintings that are, that have a border around them, for the most part anyway. I guess if some people would want to do that, then, you know, that would be their thing to do, but 95% of the time I don't usually do that.